picture this. You're getting ready for your next interview or possibly going to a wedding. You go ahead, you pick out your favorite pair of pants, your best dress shirt that you can find, and you pull out your tie only to find out that it's no longer tie. At this point, what are you going to do? You can scrap your outfit completely or you can learn how. So today, I'm going to show you how to tie a tie for informal and formal occasions. The first thing that I do want to go over, though, is just a little bit of history behind the tie. So the first tie was brought out in the 17th century. And soldiers would wear them um, just as part of their uniform. So I thought that was slightly, slightly an interesting fact. In the 1800s, what would happen, too, is if you were wearing a tie and someone tugged on it, that means um, they were ready to duel, which is also slightly interesting. Um, in the, also in the 1800s, the second tie that I'm going to show today, the foreign hand tie, uh, was first created. And then the Windsor tie, which is the first tie I'm going to show today, uh, was made in about the 1930s. It is the most used tie in professional wear, even now, back in 1930 along with in the present year. So like I said, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and go over today is the Windsor tie. So what you're going to want to do is pick out whatever tie works best for your outfit. Go ahead and slap it on your neck here. You're going to pull up your collar, just like so. Now the importance on this one is you're going to want to know the wide side versus the narrow. So the wide side obviously is a little bit wider, narrow is a little bit smaller. The wide side is going to go ahead and um, you're going to want to put it further down. Generally about half, halfway down um, is best. If you don't do this, what can happen is your tie is going to get smaller, so you could potentially finish and have your tie up here and then your narrow side way down, so you have a long tail. So the first step that you want to do is you're going to take your, t your wide side and you're going to go ahead and cross it over, so just like this, you just do a simple cross. Next, you're going to take your wide side yet again and you're going to tuck it under and go through your collar hole, which is right here. So you're going to take your tie, cross it under, and then go back over. So that's your first loop here. Then you're going to take your wide side again. You're going to just put it back behind the, the narrow side, just like that. You're going to do the same thing we did on the other side, except this time you're going to push it over. So you're going to Take it and push it over this where your neck hole is. And do so. When you do that, you can see that the triangle is starting to form. And that's kind of the base of your of your knot here. So the next step here is you're going to take your wide side again. You're going to push it over that triangle. So it covers up everything that you've done, like the knot side. So as you can see slightly here, um, it's, it's just very sleek and the corners are all the same size. So you're going to go ahead and push that over. And then to go ahead and finish this up, you are going to go back underneath, just like that, pull it through. You have your wide side and your narrow side. Then you have made a hole here in the center, which is from when you crossed it over. Take your tie to completely finish it up. You're going to take your tie on the wide side and you're going to push it all the way through. Then you'll go ahead and you'll tighten it up just like so. Push your collar down just like that. All right, you're ready to go. It's very nice because it, f it fits the top of your collar pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. Another thing that you can you can see here is it does have like the triangle as I stated. That's the signature of the Windsor. And then on the back side you can see like your crisscrosses. The next tie that I'm going to show you is the foreign hand tie. Generally this tie is going to be used um, if you're going out maybe with friends um, or you're running out of time and you just need to get something tied quickly. That's when you're going to use this. The Windsor is going to be used mostly um, for weddings or special occasions, and if you're going to go out for an important interview, that's when you would want to use that tie. So same thing, push your collar up. You're going to have your tie. You're going to want to make sure your narrow side is shorter and your wider side is longer. So you're going to do the same step that we just did at the first one for the Windsor. You're going to crisscross them over, 
just like so. The difference on this one, like I said, it's slightly simpler. You're not going to cross all over the place like we did in the past. You're going to just cross it back over like so. So as you can see, then you're going to cross one more time. So it's cross, cross, cross. So you cross it three times here. It makes kind of like a line here. Now the way that this is similar to the Windsor is now we're going to take our tie, we're going to put it underneath and through our collar. So put it underneath, put it through that collar hole, like so. You've got your wide side again, and then you have your narrow side right here. At this time, once you have that done, you're going to have just a little hole right here. You're going to take your wide side, you're going to push it right on through that hole, like so, and then you're going to just tighten that up, just like, just like so, make sure it's straight. Once it's straight, a second here, there we go, once it's straight, you're going to go ahead, push your collar right back down, and then you can see. So the big difference on this is it's not that sleek triangle. It's going to be a little bit lopsided also. And like I said, this is to be used um, if you're going to go out and about or if you're running out of time. This is still a very nice looking tie. Um, so you're still going to look professional if you go ahead and use this method as well. But like I said, generally it's used, it's just simpler. And you can see too, when I take it off, it's easier to just fall apart um, just because of the way the, the pieces are put together with that. So today I went over a little bit of the history behind the tie. I went ahead and showed you the Windsor knot along with the four and hand knot um, and went over the reasons why you would want to use one or the other. So now it's your turn. You get to decide you know, which tie is going to work best for what occasion you're going to. Thank you.